She's bringing the trailer park lifestyle to the world. Come inside, don't be shy, cause Jolene can't wait to meet ya. She's the queen of the park, she's got gossip news and lots of food to feed ya. Jolene Sugar Baker, Jolene Sugar Baker is one budget minded girl. Lots of cheap fashion is the passion at the park, the passion at the park, the passion at the park. Dropping in on neighbors is all part of Jolene's world. Jolene Sugar Baker, she's the trailer park queen. Hi there, Trailer Park fans. It's Jolene Sugar Baker, the trailer park queen. And welcome to the Trailer Park Test Kitchen. And welcome to another edition of my cooking show, Cooking with Joe Lane, the Trailer Park Cooking Show, where I teach you how to live on a budget and, you know, do it the Trailer Park way. Today, I thought I'd share with you something that will really fix your sweet tooth. It's my favorite family heirloom fudge, and it's a peanut butter fudge. It's made out of peanut butter, and you don't have to have anything like that marshmallow cream for it. You just use stuff that's probably in your cabinet and refrigerator already. It's very simple to make and it's I'm going to show you how to make it next and we're going to use some candy terms today and maybe a candy thermometer. Don't be scared. I'm going to get you through it. Um, we're going to use some terms like uh, softball and that doesn't mean uh, sports. Uh, it's actually something that means uh, candy stage and we're going to get you through it today. Don't worry. And we're going to make an easy fudge out of things out of your cabinet and fridge. Up next on my show, Cooking with Joe Lane. I'll be right back. You'll need the following ingredients to make my easy peanut butter fudge. Three-fourths cup milk. Two cups of sugar. One teaspoon of vanilla. Two big blobs of crunchy or plain peanut butter. A half a stick of butter. A pinch of salt. Here's how you put it together. Making the fudge is super simple. You need a saucepan. This, the non-stick surface works really well, so you might want to get one of those. And put it on the burner. Turn it on high and get yourself two cups of sugar out. One cup. Two cups. Now, you need three-fourth cup milk. And if I remember where I put my, let's see, I washed that off. And we're going to mix that around here a little bit. And we need two big blobs of peanut butter. You can use the crunchy kind, you can use the creamy kind, you can use the kind that you can't get open on camera. There we go. Um, you can measure it out. I probably should have measured it out for you, but this is how my family has been making it for years. You just make two big old blobs. One blob. Two blobs. That one was a little half a blob. There we go. And just dump that all in there into the saucepan. And we're going to mix that around until it's well mixed. 
Now, I fully recommend that you have a candy thermometer. Now, the soft uh, ball stage is around uh, 230, 245, uh, about 250 at the height stage, going up to a hard ball stage. And this doesn't mean anything about sports. It means that it kind of gels a little bit once it cools down. And that's what fudge is. It's kind of like a gooey texture. And um, I, these things, they're hard to find in the dollar store. You're probably going to have to find it at one of the big box stores. But they're really great. They're probably about 3 or $4. Dollars, but they really make the, the candy and fudge making experience so much better. So you should have one of these. If not, I'm going to show you a little bit later how we can find out if the fudge is ready to take off the stove top. But I'm going to pop this into the saucepan so we can keep an eye on it and know exactly when it has reached the softball stage. Now, you don't want this up too high because peanuts have a tendency to burn on heat. So, you don't want that burn flavor in there. So. If you have the time, and I fully recommend it, stand here and keep stirring it because it really makes it so much better and it brings out the caramel flavors in it and it really makes the fudge that much better. So take the time to make the best fudge and stir it while it's cooking. Okay, according to the thermometer, it says that it has reached the softball stage. I'm going to take it off the heat here, and I'm going to let it rest for, I don't know, about 15 or so minutes. Let it cool down before we pour it into the fudge plate. It just seems to work better that way. Now, I have to admit that this recipe doesn't work all the time. It may be something with the peanut butter. There may be some uh, ancient fudge secret that wasn't told to me, but um, pretty much it works most of the time and you'll get great fudge each time. I think it has to do with something with the weather most of the time, but you're going to get a great fudge if you get it to that softball stage, so that's why the thermometer is a real important thing. But if you do not have the, the thermometer, this is what you can do to find out if your fudge is ready to take off the stove top. If you don't have a candy thermometer, take a glass full of cold water and take a little bit of the uh, fudge mixture that is on the stove top and put some on a spoon. Then take it and drop it into the cold water, just like that. And if it looks like it has gelled up and looks like fudge in there, that means that it's ready to take off uh, the stove top. And you didn't really even need your candy thermometer to tell that. You can just use a cold glass of water. At this point, our mixture has cooled a little bit, and I'm going to add about a tablespoon of the butter and about a teaspoon of the pure vanilla to it now. And give that a good mix around. Today's recipe uses what I call a fudge plate and it's pretty much a platter and they come in all shapes and sizes and you might come across one while you're yard sailing this summer or maybe even at the Salvation Army because I picked this one up there uh, at the Salvation Army for just a few dollars and it's pretty much just a platter and they can be decorative or different colors or it just match your style to the, the plate and 
Uh, I even have had one uh, made by a family member. This one is that one. Isn't that pretty? Uh, it just is a really great heirloom that, that pass on to someone in your family. Uh, a bunch of croak or something like that. I mean, a fudge plate. I mean, you could will it away, uh, but you're going to be using a fudge plate and we're going to be uh, greasing it down with some uh, butter. Just take some butter and just run it across uh, the bottom there, just like that. Pour your mixture into the buttery uh, fudge plate. Just like that. And smooth it out so it is evenly distributed. And we're going to let this cool for a few hours and then we're going to beat it down just a little bit to make it nice and compact and fudge like. Now that the fudge has cooled, we want to press it down into the plate so that it becomes more compact. Make sure that your hands are clean too. easy peanut butter fudge in the fudge plate. You know, you really have to find one of these fudge plates while you're yard selling this year. They're, they're all over the place and if you don't have one passed down as an heirloom, this get one at a yard sale. But wow, it smells very peanutty and we use the crunchy peanut butter so I know it's going to have a nice crunch here and I cut me a piece. You could wrap it up in cellophane, you could put it in the little white boxes and give it away as gifts. You know, things from your kitchen, uh, it means from your heart and people would just love receiving fudge from you and I just can't wait to try it. Mmm! Wow! Taste that peanut flavor. It's very good and mmm! Kind of tastes caramely too and it really satisfies my sweet tooth and wow it tastes better than the, the, the fancy store-bought fudge kind. I really think you should try this tonight. It's so simple too. You have the ingredients probably in your cabinet already and you know peanut butter we all have that all in our cabinet and milk and sugar so simple and let me know if you do try it too. Mmm that is good. Very sweet. Tune in next time where I show you how to do it the Trailer Park way. I'm Jolene Sugarbaker, the Trailer Park Queen. Visit me on the web at JoleneSugarbaker.com. I love you. Bye-bye. Slap on all your blue eye shadow. Watch out for that big tornado. Get all filled with pride in the double wide. Visit my store at jolinesugarbiker.com.